I don't buy new cars, I don't buy brand names, I go to Goodwill for my clothes. I like to save money, I like to find bargains, it's the life I chose. I throw nothing away, I'll find a use another day for all this junk I keep. My neighbors all hate me, they abuse and berate me, cause I like doing it cheap. Yeah, I like doing it cheap. Welcome to another episode of Doing It Cheap. How y'all done? Well, I'm going to try to learn you something today. You would not believe... Now, if you can't read a ruler, I don't want you to be embarrassed. I am tickled to death that you're willing to watch a video to teach you how to read a ruler. I have had so many people work for me that could not read a ruler. I mean, it, the, the concept of fractions just blew them away. I also noticed when I was going to school that the teachers weren't too damn good at teaching fractions, neither. Well, I'm hoping that with a combination of a dollar and of an inch, I can help you to understand fractions a little bit better and hopefully understand how to read a ruler or measuring tape when the time comes that, that uh, you go to help me build something, you know. I mean, when you pull out that measuring tape and you go to read it, I sure do hope that uh, you can read it without having to cheat and look at down there where they wrote the different numbers on it. And do you know why so many people have trouble with measurements? It's because That's because men, let's see if we can get this turned right. Because men go around, where am I? I'm trying to, they're trying to get it where you can see this. Anyway, that's because men go around saying that that right there is 10 inches. As you can see, it's not. You see, women have a hard time understanding measuring because they're told all their life that that right there is 10 inches. So, ooh, get you straightened out. Okay. Everybody, everybody knows their money, I hope. Well, we're gonna talk about an inch, and we're gonna talk about a dollar. We're gonna start at zero, and this is one inch. And this is zero, and this is one dollar. Okay. It's easy, it's easy to tell, you know, if you're pulling a measure tape out, it's easy to tell if what you're measuring falls right on the number. One inch, two inch, three inch, or whatever, okay? Well, Right smack dab in the middle of an inch is a mark that's not as tall as these. Okay? And that's your half inch. And half of a dollar is 50 cents. Okay? So we're not only going to be talking about how to read a ruler, we're going to understand fractions and decimals all at the same time. So, will you agree, I mean think about it, how many pennies are in a dollar? There's a hundred pennies, okay? So in a half a dollar, there are fifty pennies, fifty cents. And a half an inch, one half. 
one of two parts. See that? One of two parts. And then we get over here, and it's two of two parts. It's two over two. And two divided by two is one. Okay? So, the big mark in the middle is a half, corresponding to half a dollar. And this is one of two of them. If you had two 50 cent pieces, you'd have a dollar. Okay? Well, let's take this down another mark. And you'll notice on your rulers, or on your measuring tape, that this is the way it looks. There'll be your inch marks, the next tallest is going to be the half inch, and then we're going to break this down into quarters or fourths. Okay? And let's go right down here and let's say 25 cents is a quarter, right? And 75 cents is three quarters. Okay? And 50 cents is two quarters. And the whole inch is four quarters. Makes a dollar. So far so good. One quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters makes one dollar or one inch. That clear as mud? So if you pull out your measuring tape and you stick it on something and it comes up to right there, you know it's so many inches and a half, so many inches and three quarters, so many inches and a quarter. This is also important to know about your wrenches whenever you're handling your wrenches, you know. Oh, the three-quarter inch wrench was too small. I need to go one higher. Well, what's bigger than three-quarters? you have to see. All right. So we're going to break these down into one-eighths now. This is one-eighth. A quarter is two-eighths. Then we've got three-eighths. Then we got four eighths, which is a half. Then we got five eighths. This is six eighths. And here is seven eighths. And one is eight eighths. If you pay any attention to the stock exchange, they'll talk about something going up one and an eighth or one and three eighths points, which is 12 and a half cents. So think about it. If a quarter is 25, then an eighth is going to be 12 point, 12 and a half, 12 and a half cents. Okay, point one two five. And if you can remember this right here, this will help you a lot whenever you're having to deal with uh, with larger fractions and decimals like point six two five. What is that? It's five eighths. But I don't want to confuse you too much. Don't want to get too involved in it. But I just want to show you how this works. It's real simple. And I'm I'm going to cut it off real short, right quick. I'm just going to say the next little mark you could have down here would be a sixteenth. And it'd be two sixteenths, three, four, five, six. And then right here, you know your wrenches? There's a seven sixteenths. And you know that a seven sixteenths wrench, you know a seven sixteenths is smaller than a half, right? And then you got a nine sixteenths, which is bigger than a half. Eleven sixteenths, which is bigger than five eighths. Six eighths is twelve eighths. Thirteen sixteenths. 
and 15 sixteenths. So when you're looking at your wrenches in your toolbox, maybe this maybe this will help you a little bit where you understand where those where those uh, measurements come from. One sixteen, two, three, five six. Here's your five sixteenths. Your five sixteenths just a little bit bigger than a quarter because a quarter is four sixteenths. Okay. Anyway. I hope that helped a little bit. I'm not going to bore you anymore with this. I will be doing another video on how to calculate how, uh, shingles for a roof, okay? Or even if you're going to put metal, I'm going to help show you how to calculate the square footage of your roof. Also, a gentleman asked would I tell him how to do underneath the eave where it's not a straight, a straight line, it's a, it's a rectangle or triangle. Anyway. I really appreciate y'all watching my videos. You have a wonderful day and a better tomorrow. Bye.